I will continue from where we stopped last Sunday. You recall that the theme for the month is what? Super abundant grace. grace. Say it with me. Super, Super abundant grace. grace. Amen. Amen. And this morning, the topic I have is what I call it is not by power or might. It is not by power or might. Can we say it together? It is, it is not, not by, by power, power or might. It's not by power. It's not by might. It's not by might. It's not by might. The song. It's not by power. It's not by power. Those who have all those super low, bars, can you help me? Let's start again now. Ready? It's not by that 
That grace is given out personally or unto individuals. What we mean that is that it's only God who knows exactly what you need and how to meet that need. You may think you know everything about yourself, but you know very little about yourself. You know what you can do a few days to come. You are humble now. It's only God who knows whether tomorrow you may not remain humble. If I ask you to stand up now, you stand up. But tomorrow, maybe you will not be able to stand up. You say, why are you telling me to stand up? Can't you use court seat? Or God saying to you, do this. Now, do it. Tomorrow, when God says, do this, you may say, no, I'm not ready for that. So it is only God who knows your need and he knows how to give you that answer to your need. And I said, you see, God, one thing that distinguishes, apart from the fact that all of us, we are all Christian, we are all children of God, but something distinguishes or differentiates us from each other. It is the quality of grace that you receive, and it is not the same. We cannot receive the same equal of grace. I remember saying to you that whether we like it or not, that is how God operates, and there's nothing you can do about it. Take, for example, when he decided to show grace to, you see, between Isaac and Jacob, I, I think there are two siblings. And God, Jacob and Esau. Sorry, Jacob and Esau. You recall that God knows the, the attitude of uh, Esau. Esau was the one that uh, did what? I know. He sold his birthright. He sold his birthright, you know. And God knows Jacob. He knows his attitude. But despite the knowledge of all that Jacob or Esau could do, God said to make a choice. He made a choice. And that's how God operates. That's how he exhibits or you know, uh, you know um, dispenses his sovereignty. And we are too small to really question him. Amen. Amen. I also say that God's grace is given on different level, different layers. What he will give to me may not be the same he will give to you. Am I right? Yes. That's why God, you see some individuals, they have special enjoyment, special link with God than the other. They may be praying the same way. Even somebody may be praying more than the other. And God will decide to favor one. That's how God does things. But if I were you, which I would suggest to you with this message, is that let it be your attitude to always ask God for his grace. Let it be your attitude. Number two, when you see someone who is you know, more or less have certain level of grace, level of you know, talent or gift or blessing that is higher than yours. Can you increase the volume, please? Do not. Please, learn to do what? Appreciate such individual. Recognize such individual. Celebrate, celebrate God's gift in such individual. Because what happens most of the time is that people, including Christians, we are envious, we jealous each other. We say, why would God do this for this person? After all, I'm also serving this same God. Let's stop that. God is blessing. Somebody is giving testimony of what God is doing or what God has done. Rejoice with him or her. Thank God for his life. Use it like I, the Muslim used to do when the Muslims are praying. They would say, God, use the, I don't know how to say it in English, use the Allah of uh, the Allah of Ishele for this person. Use it to do it for me too. Have you heard of that before? So, but some of them are sincere. Some of them are doing it with negative or motive that is all good. Using somebody to pray to get something from God. But 
it shows a sign of a father who appreciate what God is doing in that person's life. That is what we should do as a Christian. Let it be that, number one, recognize what God is doing in the life of an individual and you appreciate God. Don't be envious, don't be jealous of him. And then also, maximize whatever grace that the Lord has given to you. One God has given you very small gift, very small grace. Take advantage of it. Show everything, sense of responsibility to use that grace to the glory of God. And you see that God, you know the Bible is clear in the book of Matthew 13, 12. He said, ah, to those who have, I will give them more. To those who don't have, I will take from them and give to those who have. The meaning or the reason why God is saying this is in our attitude that you show for whatever the Lord has done or whatever the Lord is doing for you. And you see God demonstrating himself more and more, doing more and more to you. And he will demonstrate that to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said the topic is what? Not by power or might. I want to say to you, brethren, that the day you understand the role of God's favor, what I call grace, in your life, that is the day your prayer point will change. I have said it times without number. I am not against all these prayers, going for home prayer meetings, go to different places to pray. It's good. And I wish I could have time to do that too. But I tell you that many a times our prayer points have certain defectiveness. <laughs> In that, because we have not had or we have not had understanding of what God's favor can do, I pray that the Lord will help us so that we can have better understanding of what God's favor can do. Immediately we have this, you tell, I tell you that your prayer, your, prayer, your prayer language, your prayer attitude will change. Amen. 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 Let somebody open to the book of uh, 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 for me. Oh, Matthew, sorry, Matthew chapter 9, sorry, Matthew 9 first. Matthew 9, verse 22 to 20, 20 to 22. I want to welcome my friend, John, God bless you. Matthew chapter 9, verse 20 to 22. And behold, the woman was diseased with an issue of blood. 12 years came behind him. Can somebody help her read? Somebody? Is that, is that, is that? Matthew nine. chapter 9, and verse 20 to 22. And behold, the woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, She said within herself. If I may but touch his garment. Thank you. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Did, did you hear what the woman said? What was his what was her you know mindset? If I could touch the ends of his garment, I will be alright. You understand there is a difference between when you go for a prayer meeting and you want to engage in all the various activities that we do and you don't have particular mindset. You just discover that the you know it's a wasted effort. I'm not against different I have been to different prayer meetings and I appreciate what they are doing. But I can tell you that some of them the main thing especially with organizers what they are after is the financial benefit 
from the people. You may not agree with me, but I'm telling you with what I know. When they organize prayer meeting, the deliverance service, they will, cons they will put effort on what they give, the gift or the offering that people will bring. That's why they organize a series of prayer meetings. They can organize three, four meetings of prayer in a, day, in a week. And by the time you put all the prayer points together, it's just the same repetition. How to tell people on things that we hand here. Only things that we hand here. You know what I mean by things that we hand here? Nothing that will focus us or point us to heaven. The lady said, if I am able to touch the hem of his garment, definitely I'm going to be made whole. And I want to assure you today, please learn to know what will bring solution to your problem. And that's why I said that the day you understand the role of God's favor, or grace is the day your prayer point will change. It's not an amount of prayer, it's not an amount of all the things we do that bring solutions to our problem. It is our mind that is focused on meeting God, on reaching God, on having an encounter that can never be forgotten with God. That is what translates or transforms or make our life to be better. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. In this topic, I have four things that I want you to please let's consider together. How many? Four. four. Number one. The book of 1 John, verse 3, verse 8. 1 John, chapter 3, verse 8. Just open it and then listen to what I want to say. You'll read that later. 1 John 3, verse 8. The first point I have here is that once God appears unto you or your situation, the devil and his agents will leave you and your life will be better. I repeat, once that God appears unto you or your situation, the devil and his agent will leave you and your life will become better. I beg you, at every point in time, crave for appearance of God. Crave for having this definite experience with God. Crave for, you know, seek for how you could encounter God. And you discover that every effort of devil and all his agents, they will disappear from you. Oh, I used to have bad dream. Oh, I have been having this you know, sickness for years. Who oh, I have been having these challenges upon challenges. Oh, it's like uh, everything is working against me. Oh, it's like everybody around doesn't appreciate me or love me. I tell you, it is because you have not had a definite encounter with God. And let it be your prayer point, especially at this period when we are looking at God's grace. God. Please, I want to know you more. I want to encounter you. I want to see you. Because when you see God, all those devil, all those evil people, they will be put to shame. They will be defeated. And that will be your portion. Amen. The enemy will be defeated concerning your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody can quickly read that passage for me. Oh, I think it's John, John 3, 8. John 3, 8. 
Your he that committed sin is of the devil. Thank you. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Yes. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. The purpose of Christ's manifestation is to destroy the work of the devil. And Jesus will manifest himself in your life. Amen. Amen. And he will defeat the devil and all his works in your life. Amen. And you will be so happy Amen. in victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Number two. I want you to have this mindset of showing God how incapable you are and you will see or you will experience God's intervention on crucial matters of your life. Hello. Many of us, we go before God as a clever child. We go before God as very experienced and exposed. We go before God as very, very holy and righteous. We go before God with all those our you know religious activities and performances. And we think that that is the only way we can you know portray to God to give us more grace. Please. I want to beg you, change your mindset when you are dealing with God. When you are dealing with man, well, you can try that, you can have that. Tell man of all your qualifications. Tell man of all your experiences. Tell man of how holy you are. Maybe that will make them to respect you. But when you are talking to God, when you are dealing with God, I beg you, don't go before him as a very smart person. We read, or we know the story of Moses very well, what he went through, and at a point where God called him that he wanted to use him, what was his statement to God? I am a stammerer. I am, you know, I don't know how to talk. I am what? Helpless. I, what can I do? How can I go before this man? Even when God has shown him a lot of sign that could have convinced me, convinced him. Many of us, when we see the little hand of God being demonstrated through us, we, have, we assume that we know everything. This is a man that God met in the what? In the wilderness. And God performed a miracle of a burning fire, a burning, you know, a fire burning, and the bush is not consumed. Is that not too convincing for me, for us to be able to say to whosoever we want to say to that, look, I am a man of God. I am a man of God. I was in the wilderness, and I saw God in a reality. So nobody can stand before me. Moses never had that attitude. He still want God. God, I don't, have, I don't know how to talk. Many of us, this, when you look at the meaning of I don't know how to talk, it's a, it's a loaded word. I don't have the word, but many of us will say, I know how to, I know how to defend myself. Let's go. Let's go there. Who is it? No, 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 no. I will tell him how I am. I will tell him I am a British. I will tell him I am Africa. I will tell him I am a Pentecost. I have the spirit in me. And all those usual things that we boast of. So also the man David. I love David very well. I've said it here many times. One of the reasons why God categorize him as a man after his heart is because David will not I mean, pretend before God. If he sleep and he didn't sleep well, what will David say? He will cry, oh God, I couldn't sleep. Yeah, when I was sleeping, I had a bad dream, enemy pursuing me. But many of us, when we have 
nasty dream, we just shake it away, we just say, yeah, 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 I am a child of God, I have the anointing, I have this, I have that, yes, nobody can do anything for me, nothing will happen, yeah. David will not do that. I beg you, please, when you're dealing with God, you want to have, you want to enjoy God's grace, please, go before him in humility, go before him with all your, I mean, your inabilities. Go before him and say, God, I am the man who needs your help. It's me, it's me, oh Lord. Do we know that song? Standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, oh Lord. It's not my brother, it's not my sister, but me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Oh, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Standing in the need of prayer. Go before God every time, it is me. It's not, ah, maybe they are referring to those who are not uh, spreads. Maybe they are referring to those who have not uh, done this before. Those who have not uh, got this uh, uh, knowledge before. That is what they are. But it is me. We can never get to a level in relationship with God where we can say, I have arrived. Any man who thinks so is finished. Is not ready for grace of God. Please, it doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter your experience. It does not matter your achievement. Because God wants to give you more than what you have now. It's just very little you have. God has more. And he will give you more in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah, category from me, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 5 to 7. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 9 and 10. Isaiah chapter 6. Of course, you know that uh, passage very well. Then said I, Yes. Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. I am a man of on what? Unclean um, lips. Hold on. I am a man of what? Unclean lips. You know, when we, years back, I remember we used to cut. We do criticize those who, when they pray, they, they do a lot of confession, asking God to forgive them as a sinner. We say, ah, how can you every time be confessing that you are a sinner? You're supposed to overgrown that. Have you not done that before? Criticizing them. But I tell you, what God expects from you, there are some things you have used this in your mouth, your, your lip. Is it lip? Yeah. Your lip. You have said some things with your lip. <laughs> And you know, you know, a time is coming when this leap will st stand against you and say, you use me to say those things. It's not me who want to say it, but you by yourself use me to say it. At that point in time, you cannot deny it. Why can't you say to God, I am a man of unclean lip. And then what, ma'am? And I dwell in the midst of a people. I with dwell lips. With the, in the midst of people with unclean leaves. People who are saying rubbish. That's where I love to dwell. Many of us appreciate, you know, nobody was saying to me, oh, of course, many of us, many of those, you know, me, I'm no more in the corporate, I do it a little. But those of us who are still young doing those corporate work, you know what happened in your place of work, where you interact, having chats with people. We talk about things that are not very good. And you just stand there to listen. And you love to dwell there. You play around with people who are doing things, stupid things. Though you may not be practically doing it, but you love to be with them. You know, it's a time to, don't sit down, man. You will not be tired in Jesus' name. You know, you know we love to dare so that they are, they are making jests. You know, they all this uh, technology. A lot of things that people send. Many of us will watch those nonsense things. We just pretend as if we didn't watch it. We, we on the internet, on the Facebook or whatever. 
I will pretend as if I don't want it. Just, many of us, I, I wish I wish somebody can see all the things that we, we have watched in our in our phone or in our computer. Many of us will just be, you know. Go ahead. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the first seraphims unto me, having a light coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongue from off the altar. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sit down. Thank you. I tell you, the guy said, Look, I have seen God. And God, you see, it's only man that you can pretend to. But God knows everything. Thank God for all this technology that we see everywhere. When you stand at the airport or in some places, if you go into their very special security room, they know everything in your body. They know everything in your body. I was saying to Sister Lawa this morning, I was saying to her, some people came to steal something on this roof, in this area. And the CCTV captured the images of how they came, how they climbed the wall, how they took all those things. And the trolley they used to carry it away, that, the trolley is there now. They just brought it back, maybe yesterday or so. But when they finished the, the atrocity, they left the trolley in front of their house. <laughs> you see stupid people, that's <laughs> there. But, you know, when they were coming, they put food on their face. But by the time they went off, and they were taking all those, uh, they call it lead or something like that, I, can't, I don't know. This is an expensive thing on the roof. Leg, it's leg. Uh -huh. They remove all the leg on this something. And every when we were watching the CCTV, we saw everything. How they were jumping down, and they were packing everything. How they were pushing the trolley and everything. If technology can show this, what of God? Those things that we do inside our room, those things we do when nobody is there, everything is clear to God. Why will you not open up and tell God who you are? Are you there? Second Corinthians 12, 9, 10. And he said unto me, yeah. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Thank you. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in his infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. Amen. When I am weak, the Lord will make me strong. But when you think you are strong, you don't need any help. Do you know? You need any help when you are strong, you are okay, you are capable, you have all the experience of life. You have been in this country for many years, you know everybody. God will just look at you and say, it's all right, go ahead, you don't need any help. There are some individuals who need help. Those are the people I will focus upon. So now we help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Number three. I want you to always see beyond your capacity and be sure you are working with God with sincerity of heart and purpose. I repeat, see beyond your capacity and be sure that you are working with God with sincerity of heart and purpose. Many a times we confine ourselves to our capacity we don't expect God to do some impossibilities. We don't trust God to transform things that look untransformable. We don't trust God to bring water out of rock. We just close our minds to the fact that you know, I, I was talking about Nigeria to us last week. They say Nigeria is uh, the headquarter of poverty. What I said is the headquarter of prosperity, with what I always see. Those, 
one of the things I love in those people, Nigerians, is the ability to survive every situation. They will always, when you go there, when we went to a place, they have generator, general will work at a time, later they would say to a father, what do you call it? A father, which use a solar. All the, when most of the houses I went, except those in the this area, they have a um, uh, rechargeable light, rechargeable touch light, rechargeable fan, rechargeable, what again? <laughs> rechargeable hands, battery hands, the one you can use fan in your hands. Everything, they have a way to survive every situation. And then some people are making life. They are enjoying themselves, they are making money, they are doing business, they are doing everything. But you know, we here, what is our mindset? Our mindset is our wages. If the government increase only one wage, we all jump. Yeah, 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 yeah. Le yesterday, I was listening to the Labour Party leader. He said, if he enter, there is no more difference pay for anybody. All the young people of, you know, some of you are hearing it, you know, you can't, you don't hear it. You know, they pay lower rates to those who are 16 years or so. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. But they say now, if he enter, he will pay equal wages to, help me now, you don't hear me. Did you hear it? You didn't hear it, and you don't hear news. <laughs> So, it is a, the man speaking is an answer to our prayers that when labor comes in, oh, you will just, everybody, those who are 14 years, those who are 15 years, they will be earning the same salary with those who are 40 something. No more minimum. The minimum wage will be for everybody. But I tell you, some people depended on heaven to the extent that even in the midst of scarcity, heaven is open up to them. I wish we can go to that level where we can still have a link with heaven to provide resources beyond our income in a very legitimate way. I am talking with experience. If I tell many of you my wages, you will say, is that true? But I'm living comfortably, far above my normal income without any, I don't have any deal anywhere. Even when I was in Nigeria, I've never involved in any shady deal. I've never stolen anything. But the way God speaks to me to make money is beyond. People will ask me, how do you know all this? I think I've given you an example sometimes back. I was having shares in the company I'm working with here. One day I just got a letter from the registrar saying that the secretary, the company secretary resigned. I said, how can this company secretary resign? It means there's something wrong with that company, which is not clear, which is not open yet. I literally sold my shares that same week. I sold my shares, all my shares in my, in my um, company, where I work. Two weeks later, the share was coming down. Be, 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 be. Now, the, the share has come down so much, and I said, God, thank you. So I was talking to somebody and said, how do you know all these things? I said, I have a link with heaven. And heaven will give me instructions. This is every time, God heaven will give me instructions. And when heaven give me instructions, it beats all those professionals, professional of uh, accountancy or business management. It beat them. I pray the Lord will help us. Amen. That we can see beyond our capacity. That God can still do miracles in our life and he will do it for us in Jesus name Amen. number four which is the last one how many minutes I have left no time keep up to this so I can carry on yeah good good yeah five minutes uh uh that's too small <laughs> oh my god you know when we are in school when we were in school, primary or secondary school, we used to read common, common error in English. You remember? Common error in English. Some of the English language we always speak to each other. We don't know that they are wrong. Is it, how do you call it? Common, eh? common, common error. error. Yeah. 
Common error in English. Common error. Yeah, common error in English. Can somebody give me an example? Or you forgot everything? Night eh? Night BG. What is the correct? BG or BG prayer. So we all used to night. I'm going for night BG. Reverse back. Reverse back. Can you reverse back? Reverse back for me. Please reverse back. Reverse back. Reverse and back. Same thing. But you know we are used to those things. And we don't know is a you know, error. The same thing in the in the Christian community. What I call the common error, which I underline fundamental error. By most of us, it is the assumption that God will handle our case or God will answer our prayer point the same way He has answered either somebody or people or similar situation. Hello? Are we not? We have that belief. I mean, uh, God did it to, hey, in this way. He must do it for me the same way. But I tell you, it's not always like that. God knows how best and when to answer our prayers. Please, if you want grace to be multiplied in your life, forget about the way he has answered somebody. The way somebody has prayed. I have said this times and times, and I will continue to say it. Understand your dealing with your father. He is your father. He's, God is not your grandfather. Hello? Hello? God is not what? He's not your grandfather. He is your what? Your father. And just as you have, all of us, we, we have a different way of approaching our fathers. And the beauty of it is our father understands our language. He understands what will make us happy. Especially good fathers anyway. Let me qualify it. So if you want to pray, and you are using the way I'm praying to God, you are missing it. Please, I beg you, don't copy anybody the way he prays. I told you years back, Pentecostal, we don't believe in prayer books. But nowadays, we are now into it. Everybody is having prayer books and we recite it. I have no objection to it, it's good. All those who are writing the prayer books, they understand why they do that. They want to help us. Are they not? Because they know our, we are busy. Somebody who we were talking yesterday at work, he said, ah, all those pastors, all those uh, evangelists, they are doing this, they are doing that. I said, he said, but me, I don't know much about the Bible, I don't go to church, but they cannot deceive me. I said, who told you they cannot deceive you? You don't know the Bible, you don't go to church. It is because of people like you that we have all these people who deceive people. Because they know your you don't know, they don't, you don't know your left from your right. So what will they do? They will take advantage of you. I'm not saying those people are taking advantage of you. Please forgive me if you think so. But the fact is that you have a link with your father. Learn how to deal with him as father did, I mean as son did with his father. I read of this guy. His name is... Um, John, John Stocks, not your own John. <laughs> oh my God. He said, God will answer no if the things we ask for are either not good in themselves or not good for us or not good for others, either directly or indirectly. I repeat, God will answer no if the 
things we are asking for either are not good in themselves or good for us or for others, either directly or indirectly. Not all the time you pray that you have yes. Sometimes you have no. Sometimes you have wait. Because God knows what, you know, there are many things that you think you know about yourself, which you don't know. It's only God who knows. And I pray that God will help us so that we can, you know, link with heaven. So that we will be able to take God as our Father, who knows what we need, he knows when to give it to us, and he knows whether it is beneficial to us or not. I was saying something to my wife yesterday of um, you know, a very funny story. A friend of mine who called me some weeks ago, said, oh, Pastor Akin, I am no more on Facebook. I said, oh, you are no more on Facebook? He said, ah. Facebook is distractive, it's this, it's that. I'm now on Instagram. I said, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, so last week, last week, I called her. In fact, this is the closest person to me as far as uh, office work, work, work environment is. Called her, I said, oh, how are you? Because you traveled to Nigeria. I said, are you enjoying yourself? She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, did you see how. I enjoy myself, myself and my wife when we travel. He said, ah, oh, I said, oh, sorry, I forgot you are no more on Facebook. He said, Pastor Akin, let me tell you the truth. <laughs> I left Facebook because of two people, yourself <laughs> and another person. <laughs> I was laughing. I said, oh, you left Facebook because of me and somebody else. He said, because I corrected you on some posting, you didn't change. So that's why you left Facebook. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, that's good. <laughs> well, you know, I was saying to my wife, and I want you to understand me. If a friend could leave Facebook because of me, what do you think enemy will do? Hello. What do you think enemy will do? When enemy see me getting things from God. Because I am, when you are looking for people who are enjoying special grace of God, I am one of them. I have said it many times, what I'm getting from God is beyond my age, is beyond my qualification, is beyond my, what again? Experience. You know everything. Go and bring people who have the same qualification with me. They are nothing. They are nothing. Go and bring people who are in the same age with me. They are still struggling. There are many things. I, I don't have time to start to analyze it. But the way God is dealing with me is beyond every human understanding. And if anybody is saying to me, oh, you have to be hiding this, you have to be protecting yourself, it's a mistake. I am one of those individuals who have cheated there many, many times. The last one I cheated dead. You know what I mean when I say you cheated dead? You know what it means? Yeah. When you overpower dead. Yeah. The last time when I was sick, the doctor everybody said, when you want to go to the toilet, make sure you open the door. When you want to go to this man, do open the door. Let people be with you. Don't be alone. Don't as if uh, everything is over. But here I am now. I'm still here. So if anybody, if anybody is thinking of well, those you are posting, people will kill you. Let it, look, God is stronger than the witches and wizards. Yeah, there is no reason for me to be afraid. If anybody is sympathetic about ah, this man, maybe they will kill him. You are just wasting your time. I said, you left Facebook because of my posting. That's all right. And I was telling my wife that I remember when I was small, when we were you know, in the Muslim uh, world, we used to have a you guys say this, you understand? How many of us have been a Muslim before? Only her. Only her. Only her. <laughs> uh, you've been a Muslim before? What's <laughs> your Muslim name, Mama? Madina. Yeah, Madina. <laughs> Madina. Oh, <laughs> let's clap for Madina. Are you from? It's my name. Rabia, too. Rabia, too. 
Many of you may not know that's what I'm saying. If I sing that song, we you know, you know, when we are praying for us, the you know the way the Muslim clearly pray. They, when they are doing their prayer, they will be insulting somebody else with their prayer. They will be using their prayer to you know to attack somebody. When the, when the man is praying, he will be singing for us. He will say, you never heard it go. Mama sing it for me. Look, you see, the meaning of it, John, the meaning of it is that they pray that God give me a child. That when my enemies see my child, it will become very sad. If your child is doing well, your enemy will not be happy. If you are prospering in your work, your enemy will not be happy. If you are having children, the enemy will not be happy. You say, I want to wish this, uh, this children died. I wish he lose his job. I wish something happened to him that he will, so that he will come to the same level with all of us. But do you think God will fold his hand when those evil doers are planning against you? God will never fold his hand. Let us learn how to lean in the hand of God. I am not boasting on an individual or whatever. I am boasting on God. Let us not, you know, let's change our thinking about the ability and capability of the devil against God who is in with you. He who is with you is more than the devil. I am assuring you, and God will show his supremacy all the time. Amen. So when you pray and it seems not to be answered, God is working out something better for you. Amen. And it will show it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Don't go with a mindset of the fact that God must do what we're asking him to do the way he did it for A or B. Don't copy somebody's prayer pattern to be able to have, get the attention of God. That person that is shaking the line of being like this when he's praying, he, he might, that might be the relationship between him and God. Maybe God has told him, you have to do this before I answer you. <laughs> he does not say the same thing to you. When you somebody who do like this when he's praying, don't want that to copy him. Copy his pastor, he's dealing with God. God will never forget you. Amen. He will show his grace unto you Amen. in a very diverse way that is beyond your thinking. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I have a lot of passages to read, but I think I will leave that as I conclude that uh, let us know how to connect our life to the highest so that from nothing you can become something. From nothing, you will become what? Something. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Evangelist Benson, come and pray.